This is the Hammer Fisting Podcast. So, looking at GSP and Bisping, another kind of um, narrative that I've seen from fans of the sport, looking at Reddit, uh, the subreddit for Mixed Martial Arts and all the comment sections of MMA Junkie and MMAFighting.com, is you have a lot of fans who are kind of in a, an uproar about this GSP Bisping fight being made. A lot of them are bitching because they're saying, you know, Bisping is ducking Yoel Romero and he should be fighting either Yoel Romero or Robert Whitaker or any of these other guys at 185. I disagree. I think Bisping is doing the smart play as a businessman who would not want to fight GSP, especially if this MSG stuff is going to actually come to fruition. But let's look at both sides of the coin. They're saying that WMEIMG is just making money fights and it's become, and this is an over exaggeration. WWE, it's not about the best fighting the best. I disagree with that. Do you agree with that? Do you think that WMEIMG, since they've taken over and purchased the UFC from Zufa, they are not looking at making sure that the best fight the best and divisions naturally progress? I mean, I haven't seen it to the point where I'm, uh, it's like, oh, here's clearly what's going on. I mean, they're putting to this. It, it was always supposed to be the fight the fans want to see. So all these people complain. They're just the the the, uh, the loud like minority. Nope. Whatever. Um, <laughs> Shannon caught it a little bit. Uh, fuck me. I, I threw myself totally off my my case. What, what the hell are you just talking about? You're talking about Jesus how Christ. how people are complaining. What does that happen to that- me? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you have like early onset Alzheimer's. I might do. I'm really. I get. I get nervous. I might get dementia very soon. Don't get nervous. Um. Don't get nervous. So. It's the money fight. So Dana always said, I want to put the fight on the fans want to see. So all these fans that want to see this fight, and everyone's complaining, like, pe- or people are loudly complaining about it, a, a small, because there'd be no money in it. Why would they put together Bisping versus GSP if most people didn't want to see it, if it wasn't going to generate a lot of revenue for everybody? That money comes from fucking somewhere. They're not just like, inv- you know, creating money to pay these two assholes. They're, they're fucking, the fans are paying to see the fight. The pay-per-views are getting sold. People are showing they can charge a little more at the fucking venue. I don't, I don't get what everyone's, like, worried about here. Tinkle, I, if I remember correctly, you weren't a big fan of the fight between George St. Pierre and Michael Bisping, correct? No. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a big fight of any of those kind of things. I think that, uh, I mean, I get it, like, you want to make the fans that fights want to, I mean, uh, the fights that fans want to see, but also, uh, why why do you have rankings and why do you have belts if you're not going to be going through with them? I mean, look at someone like uh, Jacare. Dude, Jacare should have already had a fucking title shot already, and now he has to, like, spin his wheels and fight someone that he could have waited, but he fought somebody just to, 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 to get through time because this guy that has a belt isn't fighting anybody, and now he gets knocked out, so now he's got to go. And I think that kind of shit like that is kind of too bad because... You have one person who's the champion, but you also have a bunch of people who also are paying bills and supporting their family who are waiting that get a huge pay bump if they get that title shot. So, I, We also have to figure out that, like, no, Jacques Ray wasn't really ready to go on this amazing title run because Robert Whitaker would have gotten there and maybe beat him up again. You know what I mean? Whenever I see a guy that, that takes a fight that he quote-unquote shouldn't take and, and he loses when he would have gotten a title shot, it's like, all right, well, he wouldn't have been the champion that long anyway. It's kind of like Chuck Liddell back in the day. He's like, when Dane is trying to talk him out of fights, he's like, what are you doing? You're you're in line for a title shot. He's like, no. Like, I want to fucking fight. Well, Chuck Liddell, and, and I, I think you bring up a very good point. The, my, my point is, like, he thought he was the best in the world, so why not? I'll, t- I'll fight fucking anybody. I'm Chuck, the best. Who Chuck cares? Liddell, though, he came from an era of fighters where, I mean, Chuck made a lot of money, but Chuck was already a journeyman when he was the UFC light heavyweight champion. He'd fought in pride. He'd fought overseas. Right. He'd fought in like underground kickboxing in Valley tournament. Yeah, shit. just crazy shit. And he came from the old guard where these guys fought for years and weren't making a ton of money. They were making enough to survive, but they were still living very modestly. So they were fighting for a, the love of the sport and B to be the baddest man on the planet. Now, they have management, these these fighters are represented, and they treat their careers like other professional athletes that make a lot of money where decisions that are made, the decisions that are that you make are predicated on the fact of how does this work with my brand. I mean, once you heard fighters saying my brand, the game completely changed. Yeah. And it became less about trying to prove themselves and more about 
what decisions could I make would, that would lay the groundwork for me building something that I could that, that could sustain me financially once I hang up the gloves. And we're seeing that a lot more. There are still those guys who have that Viking warrior old school mentality, but they are few and far between. You can't necessarily blame them. That's why when you look at Bisbing versus GSP, anyone who's bitching and moaning and complaining and saying that Michael Bisbing is ducking Yoel Romero, that's total bullshit, man. Michael Bisbing fought Dan Henderson when Dan Henderson was just the destroyer of worlds on the biggest card, at least to date back then, UFC 100. He paid the price later on, avenged that loss. But you look at the career of Michael Bisping, he's taken on all comers. The guy does not duck people. Just now, he's got the belt. He fought Luke Rockhold on two weeks' notice. A Luke Rockhold that everyone was like, this guy is the, one of the pound-for-pound pound best in the world. He's going to hold on to a, the belt for a long time. Two weeks notice took that fight mm -hmm. and won mm -hmm. convincingly just knocking Luke Rockhold into the land of wind and go. So I don't buy that bullshit that Michael Bisping is ducking guys. Yeah, he fucking he fought who people thought was going to be the next big thing on two weeks notice. And he fought Vitor Belfort on steroids. So like the guy's just clearly not in Brazil, if I remember. Correctly. Yeah, he's not pussing out of anything, in, in my opinion. I just make the GSP fight. I want to see it. I mean, if you ask me, like, what, what do you want to see more, Whitaker versus Bisping or GSP versus Bisping? Like, as, you know, in terms of, like, rankings and everything, like, how it should kind of go, I want to see Whitaker. I'm, I'm really interested in that fight. But fucking GSP is interesting, too. I don't know. Like, GSP was the most dominant champion of his era and his, his reign. Him and Anderson were neck and neck. But when GSP walked away from the sport, it was a controversial loss. I mean, win over Johnny Hendricks. Mm -hmm. A lot of people felt Hendricks won that fight. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It was that close where... Even though GSP's face looked like fucking hamburger meat, it was that close when you look at the unified rules of mixed martial arts where you can't say that it was a complete highway robbery. So you have the effective or de facto, whatever you want to call it, welterweight champion moving up in weight and fighting Michael Bisping. I mean, that's not the worst thing ever. A fight that I would love to see, but if it was made, as opposed to George St. Pierre versus Bisping, if it was made... I would understand that if people had an outcry was if if Michael Bisbing fought Nick Diaz. I think that'd be an amazing fight. Diaz has fought at middleweight before. Yeah. Both guys like to strike. Both guys have cardio for days. Both guys can talk mad shit. Mm -hmm. It would be a stellar fight. But if that fight was made, I would be like, all right, this is kind of bullshit. I can yeah. see why the fans and other fighters in the division are pissed off. But come on. I mean, GSP really, the guy is a stud athlete. We've seen him just redefine how fighters fight, and he was one of the first truly well-rounded guys, so I don't have any qualms about this fight happening. And the, the, the big difference between taking a fight with like a Nick Diaz versus a GSP is pe like the people were complaining about GSP not uh, moving up for, for a long time. They wanted to see him go to middleweight, see how he'd do there, and there's no way to prove it, but I, I would bet you like anything I had that a lot of the same people, the majority of the same people complaining that GSP is fighting Bisping were complaining that GSP wouldn't fucking move up to 185 when, when he was the greatest welterweight of all time. So, so so wait, so anything you have, what is that, a bunch of fucking 18 not much. DVDs and a pocket it's, pussy? And a, uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> fucking uh, uh, a barely used fleshlet. <laughs> oh.